Hi, welcome to the mock exam revision feedback video. Uh, I will be going through questions 1 and 2 in this video. Uh, this is for the physics higher tier. Uh, question 1 and 2 appeared in both the combined science and the separate science physics. Let's move on to question 1. Question 1. Now, before I start going through the question, I want to point out three things that you see on this video which are additional. On the top of each question, I will be listing the main topic that this question is based on. On the right hand corner, I will be listing the exam year and the paper. This is the combined science higher tier question 6 paper 2 and below, uh, below the marks available, I will be also listing the topic title and with references to the textbook page numbers. SP stands for the separate science 9A page number 132 and CP stands for the combined physics topic 8A page 374. I will show you uh, the books that I am referring to at, at the end of this video. Let us move on to question number 1. Question 1. Some forces act at a distance. One example is the gravitational attraction between the moon and the earth. Describe an example of another type of force acting at a distance where the force is not gravitational. So, this question is about forces acting at a distance. <coughs> and they want you to describe another example which is not gravitational. So, what are the two other forces that act at a distance? There are two main forces. One of them is gravity, the other one is electrostatic. Now, you will need to have described the forces in a bit more detail. So, let us let's move on to answering the question. So, if I say magnetism. where light poles repel, so that is north and north or south and south and opposite poles attract. The second type of force is electrostatic where light charges repel similar to magnetism so that will be positive and positive or negative and negative and opposite poles attract. So, this is how I would answer the question. I would either choose magnetism or electrostatic. I would prefer it was if it was magnetism which is a bit easier to remember. Now, at the end of this question, I will go show you the marking scheme and what the expectations are and the alternative uh, answers that will be accepted as well. So, Moving on to part B of question 1. Part B, part 1, figure 5 shows the vertical forces act on an aeroplane. Use information from the diagram to determine the size and direction of the re resultant vertical force on the aeroplane. So, they want you to determine the size and direction of the vertical result forces. So, the forces that is acting in this plane. Now, this also gives us a good opportunity to do a little bit of revision. So, I am going to add a little bit of notes. Now, on the aeroplane, there is a force that is acting backwards. This would be drag 
and there is a forward force acting from the engine and I would label that as thrust. Now what are these two vertical forces that is acting on the aeroplane? So the force that is acting up is lift. I would not label that as up thrust because it is not a liquid and the force that is acting down is the weight of the airplane. If I was to draw a free body diagram for this airplane, I would draw it like this where that is lift and the weight and that would be the drag and the thrust. Now, the lift is slightly bigger than the weight, so I would actually make that arrow slightly bigger if I was to draw in scale. So let us look at, look at answering the question. So what is the resultant force? How do you calculate the resultant force? When forces are acting in opposite direction, you would take away one force from the other. So 8.4 minus 7.5 will give you 0 0.9 kilo Newton. Now because the overall force th that is acting up the lift is bigger than the weight you could say the force that is the direction is upwards. You could also label it as with an arrow or you could say north as well. Moving on to the next part of question 1. The airplane is descending. Figure 6 shows a diagram of the resultant vertical and horizontal forces on the airplane as it is descending. So they have now labeled the weight which is 300 newtons and 400 newton would be the drag that is acting on the airplane. So in this question they are talking about vector diagrams, again they refer to the textbook page numbers and here they are talking about the resultant forces. So you should be able to read up on it and make a little bit more notes if you need to understand it better. So what are they asking? Part 2, draw a vector diagram to scale to showing these forces. So as you can see on the diagram. 300 newtons and 400 newtons. So I would draw start the vector diagram very similar to the way they have drawn. When you are drawing vector diagrams it is important that you show that it is proportional and you indicate with an arrow the direction of the force that is acting. Now <coughs> the easiest would be to either count the number of boxes. So I have got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 boxes on 25 boxes down and on the side I have got 10, 20, 30, 35 boxes. So I could use a ruler to draw these forces. and use the scales in my ruler to help me. So if I was to measure vertically down it measures up to 6 centimeters just a little bit over than 6 centimeters. So I could take every 2 centimeter as 100 newton. So 100 newton, 200 newton and 300 newton. So we we'll draw an arrow pointing down which is going to be our 300 newtons and if you look at the horizontal plane that is eight and a half centimeters so which gives us enough room to draw an arrow which is eight centimeters long to indicate 400 
न्यूटन यूज द डायग्राम इन पार्ट टू टू एस्टिमेट द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स सो इन पार्ट थ्री यूज द डायग्राम इन पार्ट टू टू एस्टिमेट द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स दे वॉन्ट यू टू से वॉट इज द साइज ऑफ द मैग्नीट्यूड साइज ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स and how do you calculate it you would use pythagoras theorem so remember a squared equals b squared plus c squared so if i'm trying to work out a squared that will be 300 squared plus 400 squared and find the square root of that this should give you an overall answer of 500 newtons so that was question number 1 <clears throat> now let's have a look at the marking scheme so in the marking scheme for question 1 part a they are asking you to give a named force that is that would act at a distance and the situation needs to be described so they have give the example they have given is magnetic and they are expecting you to say the force between two magnetic poles and we have gone in detail to say that like poles repel and opposite poles attract and for question 1 part b the answer was 0.9 kN and they would act up the word up upwards or even ascending the word north capital n or an arrow pointing upwards and as you can see the vector diagram that we drew what they are expecting is two vector arrows at right angles representing the forces so if you draw two lines at right angles you would get one mark and the two vector arrows should be proportional so we have drawn that in proportion and for the last part of the question 1 the answer was 500 newton they would accept any answer between 490 and 510 now let's move on to question Two. Question two is about the particle model. So, question two in Figure three, Figure three shows some water in a measuring cylinder and a lump of iron. Here you've got the lump of iron, and there's water in this measuring cylinder. Now, be, even before I move on to the next part, I can easily identify that the volume of water that's there is four hundred and ninety. centimeter cube let's move on to the question and find out what they are asking so the lump of iron is lowered fully into the water the water level in the measuring cylinder rises to 530 cm cube the density of iron is 7.9 cm cube gram per cm cube calculate the mass they want you to calculate the mass and they have given you the equation for density density equals mass divided by the volume now the symbol rho is for density m for mass v for volume so if i put these symbols in an equation triangle mass goes on the top volume on one corner and rho for density on the opposite corner so how do you calculate the mass in this question so if i block off mass here that gives us the density next to the volume which is which means it needs to be multiplied so mass equals the density multiplied by the volume now one of the common mistakes that was made by students was that taking the volume of that needs to be used in the calculation as 530 or taking it as 490 now if you did that the maximum marks that you would get is 2 instead of 4 now they also want you to give the answer in two significant figures this is something that a lot of students fail to notice and missed an opportunity to get that one extra mark even if your answer was incorrect if you gave 
because of because you use these two values 490 and 530 if your final answer which is written here in the space provided you would get a mark for writing the incorrect answer in two decimal or two significant figures so you could potentially get do it wrong and get three marks out of it so let's do it the right way so what is the volume of the lump of iron so because it started off at 490 centimeter cube you need to take away 490 from 530 so that gives me a volume of 40 centimeter cube so the density which is given is 7.9 multiplied by 40 the answer would be 316 grams if you stop that this that gives you three marks writing this in two significant figures correctly would be 320 grams moving on to the next part of question 2 Part B, a piece of wood has a similar shape and volume to the lump of iron. So it has a similar shape and volume. So which means that this piece of wood has an irregular shape. Irregular shape similar to that of the iron. The density of the wood is 0 0.82 gram per centimeter cube. And the density of the water is 1 gram per centimeter cube, which means which makes the density of wood like smaller than the density of water. So if you were to place the piece of wood in a beaker of water or in the measuring cylinder because it should fit because it's a similar shape to the iron, let's say that's the measuring cylinder, the wood would not actually sink or fully submerge. It would simply float in the water. Now, explain why the method used in part B cannot be used to determine the mass of the piece of wood. So, this reference to part B is an error. It should actually say part A because we were talking about measuring the volume of the iron in part A. This part is part B. So, explain why. You need to give reasons. So, what is the reason? Why can't we actually use the same method? Right. As I stated, the density of wood is le less than that of water. So let's start off with by saying that. So the density of wood is less than that of water. So it would not fully submerge like the iron. In brackets, I can say it would float. Therefore, it will not be possible to get accurate volume measurements. Part C, describe what happens when a substance experiences sublimation so you need to know the definition for sublimation it is part also part of particles and density or states of matter or change of state to be accurate so what is sublimation sublimation is when is when a solid changes state to a nearly wrote it as a liquid it should be 
gas. It doesn't go through the liquid state. Now there are examples. Here they are not asking you to give examples. What they are expecting you to do is simply describe what happens during sublimation. Now since it will be useful to remember some examples, I can give you two examples. One is iodine crystals changes to iodine vapor right it doesn't go through or change into liquid iodine the next is solid carbon dioxide which we commonly call as dry ice that changes to carbon dioxide gas that brings us to the end of this video oh before I forget the marking scheme so as you can see in the marking scheme the, uh, the expected answer is 316 with the two, two significant figures we got that right as 320 now that this is the key where they are expecting or they can give you two marks for incorrect volume values. So you would either get it as 4187 4, or 3871 depending on which volume that you are using. Any answer written to two significant figure, figures is independent work, independent mark which means whatever your answer was if you wrote that answer in two correct two significant figures you would have got one mark. If you didn't do anything and just wrote as 22 you would have got one mark because that is two significant figures wouldn't recommend it, doing it question 2 part b marking scheme for the two marks they are asking an explanation linking the density of wood should be less the you, you need to indicate that the density of wood, uh, wood wood should be less than that of water you could also say that the wood floats or it should be submerged or allow water absorbing some of the wood absorbing some of the water now the second mark is to say that less volume of water will be displaced than that of the wood or you could say that incorrect volume reading will be obtained or allow idea that the volume cannot be measured in this way which we have done for the two marks. For part C question 2 a description in including idea of change of state solid changes. So just to say that the word changes gives you one mark and you need to say that to gas solid changes to gas vapor directly and you could also indicate it with an arrow saying gas to a solid or you could give examples here they have given you ice as an example ice to water vapor or steam or you could say the reverse for those two marks Now that brings us to the end of the video. The next video to follow will be on question 3 and 4. Please use this video to make your own notes on your mock exam paper to help you revise. Thank you and I will see you soon.